What's up everybody, it's Victon here with another 3.15 Expedition League build guide. Today I'm going to be going over my build version of the ever so popular Forbidden Rites Totems. This build is super strong right now, definitely one of the strongest, which is of course why it's so popular. I've seen tons of guides on budget versions, so I figured I'd focus this version more on the mid-level to end-game version of the build. I will still have info on the budget version though, so if you're interested in that, don't worry, I got you covered. As you can see in the gameplay showcase, we got some really great boss damage and very solid mapping capabilities as well. At this point, I've killed every in-game boss and Maven invitation except the feared, and that's only because the one time I tried it, I went way too hard and was a little bit too confident and rolled it too hard and sadly paid the price for that. I think I could have easily have done the map if it was white or even been maybe rap magic up to rare 40%, 50%, something like that, but I rolled it over 100% quantity, had some crazy map mods on it that probably wasn't the smartest choice. Oh well. That and I've been running a Juice Tropical Island Delirium Mirror Maps to make currency, so it's also a pretty solid mapper. Yeah, overall, it's a seriously amazing build, and honestly, it kind of saved the league for me. I haven't really been enjoying the actual league itself, but this skill was a breath of fresh air, and I have been having a blast with it so far. Now, before we get into the guide, just a few things first. First, I kind of want to let you guys know what you're going to get out of this guide. So I, of course, have the Path of Building link that I'm going to give you guys, and that will have the leveling guide for the points built in, so you'll know how to build your character from level 1 all the way up to level 95. We also have the Trade Link spreadsheet available, so you guys can look at every single gear item upgrade that you're going to get from a low budget all the way up to the high-end budget of the build. It's going to give you trade links directly to the PoE Trade website to make it as easy as possible for you all to gear out your characters. And of course, at the end of the video, we'll go over my final thoughts on the build and where I'd like to take it from here. Lastly, before we dive into the path of building, I wanted to mention that I do stream on Twitch, so if you ever have any questions, feel free to come on over there and ask away. I'm always happy to help you guys out with any of my builds. Links can be in the description for my Twitch, and also if you're interested in supporting the channel, I do have a Patreon link below, which is going to get you access to my community Discord, where I do tons of personal build reviews all the time. Alright, so enough of all that, let's hop right into the guide, and feel free to check timestamps below if you want to skip around to certain parts of the guide. All right, here we are in Path of Building. So what I'm going to do here in Path of Building is show you guys kind of how to use it. Uh, then we're going to talk about, of course, the skills, the gym links. We're going to talk about our items. And after that, I'm going to show you an alternate POB that you could also use. My mapping partner is also running this build. He has a little bit different of a setup, which is pretty cool. There's actually many different ways that you can actually build this. This is just kind of the two ways that we have built. So I'll, I'll show you guys. Uh, they're actually pretty close in DPS. So pretty interesting that you can do multiple different builds and have relatively similar DPS numbers, but uh, he's still pretty different. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so we'll do that. And then after that, we will go over the trade links and how to use that document and also show you kind of some item progression as we go through. So again, click the timestamps if you want to kind of jump around. So we'll start in here in the path of building. Uh, first thing to note is, of course, if you go down here, you can check out all of the leveling points that you're going to start. So if you start out the build, uh, you start here, right? And then you just kind of keep coming, right? Uh, and it's also going to show your ascendancy as you level up. So just make sure you check that all the way up until level 100. Uh, do note that we don't go with our cluster jewels until about uh, around 90 points. Um, which is somewhere probably when you're going to get into yellow tier maps, somewhere in there. At that point, you will have had an, probably enough currency to purchase one of these medium cluster jewels and then craft it yourself. Uh, the big thing that we're looking for here is ancestral preservation, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, you know what, we can even probably talk about the cluster jewels here up front because they are really important to this build, and I'll, I'll explain why. So the way Forbidden Right Totems works is they are actually going to be spending their own life to cast uh, the spell, which makes them do more damage. So basically, the more HP that your totems have, the more damage that they're going to be doing. So it's a really interesting way to scale our damage is by getting as much totem life as possible, but also increasing their tankiness by as much as possible so that the totem actually doesn't die by spending its own life. So the more totem... Um, defenses you get for example chaos resistance you get on the totem and also hp the tankier it is the more damage it does and also the longer it survives and the way that we have this set up right now we can actually die in a wave 20 simulacrum or even big up juiced up maps uh, and if we throw up all six of our totems 
they actually survive and continue dealing damage after you're dead and they literally survive wave 20 simulacrums without being killed for probably a good 30 seconds uh, so it's pretty pretty crazy how much survivability these totems have which is pretty cool usually in totem builds you kind of get into a place where like for example freezing pulse totems it's great that they freeze but it's really annoying sometimes when your totems die before they can even start doing damage right i'm sure if you guys have ever played totem builds before you'll have experienced that really annoying uh, this build just naturally fixes that and it makes them incredibly tanky which is a nice quality of life uh, boost for this build so as far as the tree itself, we'll go over the uh, the cluster tree in a second, but just so we can kind of go over the tree itself. We're, of course, going a Hierophant because they get the most totem things. Um, also, they're getting plus one to totems here. We're getting um, a whole bunch of totems, basically a whole bunch of totem stuff, tons of damage. We're also getting uh, crit. There's two ways to build it. Like I said, you can go the crit version or the non-crit version. I actually started with the non-crit version. It's actually relatively similar in price. It's a little bit cheaper than the crit version, uh, but basically the same. But the crit version gives you way more damage, probably a good 30 to 40% more damage with the crit version. Uh, and this node right here is so crazy for this because it gives you plus four to minimum power and endurance charges. So you will always have four minimum power and endurance charges. So very, very good. Um, and then your last node that you get is the divine guidance, which is a ton of mana. We are also scaling this build defensive wise with mana. So we're getting, I think in my build, I have, well, how much mana do we have? So unreserved, we've got about 2000 mana. Um, which is helping us for mind over matter. So we have 30% damage taken from mana, uh, which is very good. Um, lots of damage also being scaled off that mana too, like this node right here is actually giving us quite a bit of damage. Uh, and then we also have Arcane Surge, so a whole bunch of good stuff scaling our damages. Uh, we do of course get a little bit of chaos damage up here, and this is actually a pretty solid node right here. 20% increased withered uh, effect, which is very, very good. We're stacking withered, we're trying to stack withered as fast as possible on monsters, uh, which is basically a damage increase for all chaos damage. Uh, so this is actually a pretty big damage node. And then of course, just, you know, crit chance here, crit chance here. These are crit chance nodes. You're getting some mana here, uh, you know, getting some mana over here. Now, the only two reasons, or the only reason I have these two nodes right here is actually I'm short on uh, intelligence and dexterity so grabbing these two nodes right here was actually able to cap me uh, you could get these two technically if you wanted to you'd have even more um, but eventually I was thinking about going down here to pain attunement or even the nimbleness which is a crazy good node for damage um, but like I said if you have better gear or if you have you know different uh, places where you can put dexterity or an int on your gear you might not need to take these nodes or like I said maybe even these nodes um, that's totally fine. So just note that, that you don't have to use these unless you need the extra attributes. Other than that, the build is pretty simple here. Uh, the leveling up experience is really, really smooth with this build. Uh, you're gonna get this node, which is Ancestral Bond, so plus one to maximum summon totems very early on. Uh, you actually get it, let's see, around, yeah, you get it at 21 points. Um, so super early on and now one quick tip that I'm gonna give you guys on I get asked this quite often is how do you level this build up, right? Um, so you get forbidden right totems at level 28 now I would not use forbidden right totems at that point. I would use the holy flame totems You can still go crit um, So you would do holy flame totems uh, you would do increased crit increased damage uh, increased critical strike damage sorry um, and then something like, you know, uh, you could do faster casting, multi-totems, all that good stuff for your four link. Um, but yeah, do Holy Flame Totem. The point at which I would switch over to Forbidden Right Totems is the point at which you get Cloak, or I'm just not Cloak of the, you get, uh, oh my goodness, what is it even called? It's the most important item. Uh, until you get Soul Mantle. Uh, and that is at level 49, which is actually pretty early on. So that's actually pretty nice. So the reason this is, is because Soul, um, Soul Mantle comes with the Socket of Gems are supported by level 20 Spell Totem. The reason that's important is because level 20 Spell Totem gives your Spell Totem so much life, which is going to give you a massive, massive damage boost at level 49 if you put Forbidden Right in there. Because remember how I said earlier, they're scaling off of Totem Life. Uh, so it's a really big damage boost. So literally get a any link soul mantle, just get it up to a four link and put in forbidden right in there. 
and it's gonna do mega mega DPS. Uh, what I would do for your four link is probably a forbidden right, uh, increase critical damage, increase critical strike, and multi totems. That's probably my four link. Uh, my five link, I would throw in void manipulation. Uh, and then the six link, you actually have two options here. Uh, you have volley, which is a little bit better, maybe, but it's there's still testing that probably needs to be done, but volley or uh, faster casting. We actually like using faster casting, maybe a little bit better. Um, it's, it's faster casting is definitely better if you're doing bossing and volley, maybe if you're doing mapping. So just, just something to note there. So those are kind of interchangeable. Uh, okay, so back to the tree. Um, so yeah, so around level 49, you can switch to Forbidden Right Totems um, once you get the Soul Mantle. Keep that in mind. Up until then, Holy Flame Totems. Perfect. So let's go to the very last here, 100. Um, a couple things to note here on our uh, jewels here. Very important to get Totem Life. Totem Life, Totem Life, Totem Life. It's so much damage. It's so much damage. So check this out. We have 13.6 million. I'm going to take this off and it goes down almost a whole million. What, 700,000 DPS? That's mainly coming from the totem life. Uh, granted, I have a spell damage and totem damage here, but that's not that much. It's really the totem life which is giving it a ton of damage. So get jewels like that, uh, super solid. This jewel right here is super cheap, uh, and you can get these, you can actually get this pretty early on. I would get this as your second item that you purchase. Definitely get the soul mantle first, uh, and then get this as your second item. 3% increased totem life per 10 strength allocated in radius. Uh, so it's very, very good. It's actually, I think, what was it? It's gonna give your totems 21% life, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which is a ton of life. And then we pick up these nodes for even more life. So it's just super good. The leveling process is actually really crazy. Once you get to Soul Mantle at 49, it's smooth as butter. Uh, as far as the cluster jewels here, sadly the cluster jewels are a little bit expensive. I would try crafting at least one of these yourself and then maybe buying the second two. You're gonna probably spend a little bit less money doing that um, just by crafting them yourself. So we'll kind of go over here the most important. Obviously, like I mentioned, ancestral preservation is the most important. Uh, it's gonna give totem life 30%, which is crazy. Um, it's gonna give them extra physical damage reduction, make them tanky, but also the big thing here is 40% chaos resist. So when it's doing damage to itself, that 40% chaos resist is helping it significantly, which is what makes it stay alive so much longer. Some of the other really good nodes to get are ancestral echo. Uh, which is basically just totem speed and a lot of cast speed. We actually scale cast speed in this build is one of our main stats. Gym levels actually does not scale the ability that much. Not a whole lot of damage comes from uh, gym levels. Obviously, you want to get to 20. You want a 20, 20 gym, uh, but going to 21, 20 gym actually isn't that much damage. So uh, for the price, I would go with other upgrades over that. But cast speed is very, very solid. So cast speed. Uh, the other really important ones here though are this. So gain arcane surge when you summon a totem. So obviously we're summoning totems all the time, so you'll always have arcane surge. Uh, super good. Uh, I have another ancestral preservation. I would definitely try and get at least two ancestral preservations. I have uh, ancestral echo, which is again, placement C speed and cast speed. You could, I would probably say, do maybe another ancestral preservation there, if you can, instead of that. That would probably be a lot more damage. Uh, and this last one is almost mandatory just because how good it is. Sleepless Sentries. You have Onslaught if you've summoned a totem recently. Onslaught gives you a 20% action speed, so move speed and cast speed, uh, and actually attack speed as well since we are using shield charge, which is pretty nice. So Onslaught is absolutely massive for this build. So this is a very important node right here. So those are your cluster jewels. I know a lot of people are going with the fourth cluster jewel or just maybe even a second cluster jewel if they only have two larges, uh, and that being the projectile cluster that gives you, what is I think it's chance to taunt on hit. Uh, and th that is good, that is very, very good for your totems. Um, but in my version, it, it was way more damage to just go with crit because we would lose out on four points right there. I needed those, I was really starved for points. So I needed those four points, actually I think at that point to get, I got these three nodes instead. Uh, an interesting thing about my version is I actually have, where are you, decoy totem, the unsung hero of the patch, my friends. Decoy totem is in 
insane. Uh, of course you can get taunt on hit, sure, but if you're this version and we don't have the points for that extra cluster jewel, Decoy Totem is absolutely crazy. This thing taunts like the entire screen worth of AoE and it literally never dies. I don't think I've ever seen a Decoy Totem actually die. Even in stuff like The Feared and like crazy in-game bosses, Decoy Totem doesn't die. It's pretty crazy just because of how much we're scaling um, the life of our totems. It's absolutely crazy. Yes, you are going to lose a totem. We have six totems with this build. Uh, so it's actually, you're only gonna have five normally. If you choose to use a decoy totem, there's going to be a whole bunch of situations where you don't use decoy totem, like just mapping uh, and even just, you know, doing bosses for maps. I don't I wouldn't use a decoy totem, but if you're doing something, some crazy content, like some in-game bosses, uh, even sometimes then I don't do it. But sometimes it is nice to throw up that decoy totem and you just suffer a little bit of damage loss, but it's like so much safer. All of the gar all of the um, Maven invitations, I do use the decoy totem, and they're like the easiest kills I've ever had. The Breach Lord invitation has always given me trouble, uh, and it's always kind of the most challenging, even sometimes more than uh, the feared. But this one was the easiest kill I've ever done. I've done it deathless every single time I've run it, and it's because of decoy totem. So yeah, so that is pretty much the skill tree and the ascendancy points. Let's go ahead and go over to the skills. Uh, we'll talk about Forbidden Right first. Uh, forbidden right multiple totems increased critical damage increased critical strikes that's your four link like i said void manipulation being your fifth link and then your six link this interchanged uh, you can choose either of these it's up to you i think faster casting is better for single target and volleys may be better for wrapping but honestly maybe even still faster casting it's debatable between those two volley is going to show a higher dps tooltip but that doesn't actually mean that it is higher TPS. Uh, long story on that, but uh, just know that honestly, either of these are fine. Basically what I said is kind of what you're looking at. And of course, we're putting that in our soul mantle, which gives us the level 20 spell totem. And that is how we're able to not have to like use a spell totem um, socket here. Uh, so that's our forbidden right. We also have two auras. We're gonna be running vitality and clarity as our two orders. Uh, and in my weapon here, I also have the third single solo link as decoy totem. Uh, moving on from there, we have our in our boots, but it could be in your boots, helmet, gloves, whatever. Uh, immortal call, cast when damage taken, increased duration, and withering step. Now, withering step is leveled up all the way. So we have level 20 withering step, which means it's not going to trigger off your cast when damage taken because we are going to keep that at three. We're going to keep our mortal call at two and increased duration is actually going to help both the immortal call uh, and the withering step. Withering step is going to be adding uh, wither to enemies when you run around. It also gives you a nice little bit of movement speed. So very, very nice for giving withered onto enemies. Um, now, like I said, Wither is just super, super important in this build. So we're actually going to have a four link dedicated to Wither as well. We're going to have Wither, Increased Duration, Infused Channeling, and Faster Casting. And this is just to get as much Wither on the target as possible. That's again why Decoy Totem is so good, because you can just pop up a Decoy Totem uh, and you can just sit there and cast Wither for days. And it doesn't even matter because nothing is going to come after you. So it's a pretty good combo there. Um, I actually highly suggest this in any soft core build obviously if you're doing hardcore don't do this um, but portal and cast on death it just it's a quality of life that just is so nice i do a lot of um delirium mirror farming and you do not want to die and have to get like have to start at the beginning of the map if you do that your run is basically bricked uh, so definitely get cast on death portal if you're doing that uh, setup i have flame dash with faster casting and i also have sheer shield charge on a three link with fortify uh, which is pretty nice it's gonna you're gonna be shield charging all over the place flame dash in certain situations but it's also gonna be fortify uh, for a less damage taken so very very nice there uh, we do have assassin's mark on our ring which we'll go ahead and go over now now let's actually start up at our, our weapon here so it's actually a pretty basic wand nothing too crazy here i think i only spent like 60 chaos on this or something spell damage again cast speed is huge get as much cast speed as you can critical strike chance critical strike multi mana easy peasy uh, for our shield you can actually get these shields super cheap i think i bought this for 10 chaos they probably have gone up since then uh, but spell damage again cast speed um, critical strike chance for spells if you can get a res on there that's nice if you can get life on there that's nice mana that's nice ideally in a perfect world you would also have plus one to summon totems that's in the higher end version of the build uh, and we'll talk about that in the alternate pob when i show you here in a second 
um, but this is the one that I did, and it's totally fine. This is like a 10 KS, like I said, shield, nothing. Uh, Verity's Veil, there's definitely a different ways to do this, and I'll actually show, I was only using a regular helmet up until maybe a day ago, at which point I actually got a Verity's Veil to drop for me, so I just went ahead and used it. Um, Verity's Veil, the reason this is very strong and it's very expensive right now is because it helps you with your so the reason soul mantle is great but it also has a downside right and the reason that's the reason we're going for Eddie's veil or any other option to get 100 percent curse immunity uh for soul mantle i'll just go over this quickly because i know a lot of you know it but some people might not so if the issue here with soul mantle is inflicts a random hex on you when your totems die so you're basically going to have nine curses on you at all times so that's usually very very bad but we want to get 100 percent curse immunity so that actually doesn't bother us and there's many ways that we we can do that and there's uh you know basically three ways i would say there's this way which is verity's veil uh and the reason we can do that here is you are hex proof if you're, you have a magic ring in your right slot so you can see that this is my right ring it's a magic ring so i'm hex proof which means that all of those curses that i have on me will not affect me so there you go done perfect uh, or you can do the other option here which uh, i don't have in here but basically it's just a rare helmet um, with the enchant that is forbidden right has one additional projectile that is so much damage so 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 much damage um, so, and it's very expensive by the way to get a Verity's veil with the enchant I think it, it's like a 8x for or not a, a 5 to 6x for a Verity's veil and it goes up to like 15 if you actually want the enchant so if you're gonna get a Verity's veil you're probably not gonna get the enchant for a while unless you got some spare cash um, yeah, so you would get a rare helmet with the enchant and then just craft on it yourself. Get life and resistances easy peasy. Uh, and if you're doing that option, then your two rings, you're going to have different rings. Uh, you can, of course, go with the cheap option, which is two Kikazaru rings for like one chaos. <coughs> Excuse me, for one chaos. I'll show you what those are right here. Kikazaru. Um, 40% reduce effective curse. So if you get two of those, that's 80. And then you can get 20% from either the tree or your, let's actually see if it shows you here in the Pantheon. Um, it's this one, you, you, no, it's not Yugle. Which one is it? Is it Yugle? Oh, I hate the way it does this. You actually can't see it. Let's just click Yugle. Yeah, there you go. So it's Yugle. So if you get Yugle and then um, capture Varhash, Shimmering Aberration, it's a boss. You gotta go, you gotta put a divine vessel inside your map device and then go kill that boss varhash and then out pops the divine vessel when you're done with the map take that to sin uh which is what in act or like the end act the epilogue um give it to him and it unlocks the 20 percent reduce effect of curse on you and that is 100 chance to 100 chance uh, reduce chance to be affected by a curse basically so that's the other way uh, the better way in my opinion is to not do two kikazarus but to do two rings that actually have 40 percent curse reduction on them uh, that is a mod that you can do and i'll show you that when we go over the gear in the uh the trade section here but uh they're actually pretty cheap and the reason that you would do that is because you can get life you can get resistances and 40 percent curse uh, reduction on you so and you would get two of those for basically the same effect as kikazarus uh, a little bit more expensive, but they're, they're not even crazy. I spent maybe like 30C on one and 60C on the other one when I did have that setup going, so it's really not that expensive. Uh, but we'll talk about that here in a second. But this is this version, right? So Verity's Veil with the ring here. The other version is to have a uh, Xeris Reflection. Um, this is also expensive. This is what, I think 8X, something like that. As you can see right there, unaffected by curses. So that's all you have to do. You would put that um, shield instead of this weapon too. My issue with that is that you're losing a lot of damage. We have a ton of damage coming from this. So what, we're at 13.6 mil. Let's take that off. Uh, we're down to 11.1. So 2.5 million DPS from our shield. Uh, so you're losing a lot of DPS if you're going with that shield. So just something to consider. Uh, for our flasks, we definitely want a diamond flask uh, to get extra crit chance. We are at 100% crit chance with that. Without it, we're at 94, uh, so definitely want that. Your other flasks here, oh, and by the way, so the what I've been doing is this one right here, reuse at the end of flask effect. There's a other couple good ones, uh, and this is, I think is, what is it? It's the instilling orb. It's the new orb that you can enchant your flasks with. Uh, this is a good one. There is also use at full charges. 
Um, that's a good one. There's also another good one that's like when you hit a rare or unique enemy, that's also a very good one. So those are the three that I would pick for your uh, enchants there. Uh, just a Quicksilver Flask, uh, doesn't really matter what you put on there. I have reused at the end of uh, Flask Effect just so it's always up throughout the whole map. Pretty solid. Uh, Dying Sun is a massive damage boost. Massive damage boost. It's not long, it's only 2.8 seconds. Um, so it's, you know, for a boss, you can nuke it down really fast. Check this out. 13.6 million, 20 million. Holy macaroni. Uh, so the reason it's so much is because skills fire two additional projectiles during flask effect. Uh, it also gives you AOE, which helps the projectiles overlap. So just a very good flask all around. Now, the best enchant that I have found for this is 50% increase effect. Basically, that means it's instead of two projectiles, it's giving you three projectiles. Insane. Insane, actually. Look at that. That's just nutty. 13.6 up to 20.5. That's crazy. Uh, I have an aquamarine flask here with uh, used when you become chilled and also immunity for chill and freeze. Uh, so basically, that automates this. So if I ever get frozen, it instantly pops this, unfreezes me, and then I'm protected basically against freeze for a little bit. Um, I, I don't know why this says I have two dying flasks here. This one is supposed to be Blood of the Curry. Uh, that is my life flask of choice. You can do any life flask that you want. I always use Blood of the Curries just because I like them, uh, but you can do something different if you want. Uh, for our jewels here, we talked about the rare jewels, but let's talk about the uh, unique ones. Of course, Rain of Splinters is very solid, like I have been mentioning, because Totem Fire's two additional projectiles is so much damage. Um, the rolls here, I think, what does it go from 30 to 40 or 50% reduced totem damage? So you obviously want as low as possible there to do less damage, uh, to do more damage, basically. So as close to 30% as you can get, but just whatever within your budget is totally fine. The totem fire two additional projectiles is just so much damage. Uh, Self-flagellation is also a ton of damage. 20% increased damage per curse on you. You have nine curses, so a ton of damage there. And then we already talked about Sire of Stone or Spire of Stone. Uh, for a 21% increase uh, life to your totems. So uh, going back up here, we do have gloves. Uh, best in slot would be culling strike as well as a nerve on hit. I do not have those right now. I just have culling strike, which is what I would recommend over a nerve on hit because it helps with bosses pretty significantly. Um, just culling strike. And if you can get some resistances and some life, that's fantastic. Uh, for your boots, this gives so much damage. 49% totem life, absolutely crazy absolutely crazy gives you some increased totem placement speed which is pretty nice and some movement speed so not too bad the best enchant here is 120 percent increased critical strike chance if you haven't crit recently you're a totem build so you personally are never critting so you will always have 100 percent chance or 120 percent increased crit chance very solid my amulet is actually pretty poo poo uh, it's literally just life and resists and i was able to get some chaos res on there and i got some area of effect and area of damage um, best in slot here would be like cast speed and crit multi along with some life and resistances. And then we already talked about our rings. Uh, the first ring here that I just got was, uh, you know, as much life and resistances as possible to really help out. Uh, and my second ring, which was a magic ring, uh, did get one with trigger 12, or I'm sorry, 12, trigger level 12 assassin's mark when you hit a rare or unique enemy. T ton of damage, ton of damage with that. I think that gives another million or million and a half DPS alone. Uh, so very, very strong. Uh, for our belt choice, we actually go with Arn's Anguish. Um, so this is roughly the same. It's it's a little bit less. It's what? It's a 20% increased damage boost compared to a lot of people like going with the, um, what is the belt called? The Coward's Legacy, which is going to give you a 30% more multiplier if you have Pain Attunement. So pretty solid, but it's also like, you know, eight exalts, whereas this is about 50 chaos. Um, and it's 20% more damage compared to the Coward's Legacy, 30% more damage, so very close to be honest, and it's way cheaper. So what does this actually do? First off, it gives you 50% maximum life, which is pretty solid, 60 up to 60% fire res, which is crazy, um, and the big one here, so brutal charges instead of endurance charges. Now remember that we have four permanent endurance charges. So basically what that means with this belt is we have four permanent brutal charges. Now what are brutal charges? Uh, it's 4% chance to do triple damage. So with four, we have 12% chance to do triple damage. That is massive extra damage, massive extra damage. Um, like I said, 20% more damage. 
a super, super solid belt for very cheap. If you don't have this, you can always just go with a stitch and vise with life resistances. Um, and in the jewel socket, you can go with, again, life resistances, mana, or if you want to get some extra dex, intellect, you can get it there as well. Uh, perfect. So that was the item. So let's go ahead and go over the quickly the second POB that I have for you guys. This is my buddy who is my map partner. Um, he has a very similar build to me. He's at level 94 right now. Uh, very similar DPS, but he's doing stuff a little bit different. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you guys because it's kind of interesting, right? So he's going with double wands instead. Um, I'm sorry, not double wands. One wand plus the, the shield with the plus one to maximum summon totems. Now, the reason he is doing this is because he, on his skills, uh, actually has, where are you? Uh, a different setup for this. He has wither, multi-totem, spell totem, faster casting. So he has five totems that he can summon um, plus wither which gives him two totems so he will always have two wither totems up at any given time which is mega casting wither on the bosses super super fast so basically it's like an instant stack of 15 stacks of wither on a boss using this setup so it builds it up very 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 quickly um, everything else is pretty much the same that i have except for this he does have arcane cloak arcane surge and increased duration with decoy totem now the reason he has arcane cloak and arcane surge is because he does not have one of those clusters with arcane surge when you use a totem recently so if you don't have one of those yet uh one of those totems that have that this is what you should do you should do arcane cloak arcane surge increased duration decoy totem that's what uh what i would suggest everything else about his build is the same i will link both of those pobs um, in the description if you guys want to check that out. So let's go ahead and cover this now. There we go. So this is what it's going to look like if you pull this document up. This is my uh, Von Victims POE build list. So it's all of my builds. Everything that you could ever want is in here and it's got all the trade links for all of my builds. Just note that it's when it first pops up, it's going to show you the freezing pulls. Just make sure you scroll down here. Uh, you're going to click all the way over and tab over to the last one, which is Forbidden Right Totems here, Fant. Um, and here's everything you need, guys. So I've color coded it. The blue ones are the low budget, somewhere between you know zero and five X. Um, the purple ones are the medium. It's actually probably let's change that. It's probably around 15 X for the mediums. And the near min maxed is probably I think these got left over from the other ones. Probably about 100 X. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I did not mean 100 X. It's probably about 50 X. Apologies. I think that is correct uh, now that I'm thinking about it. it it's really not too expensive um, for a near min max version. So there's some builds that are way more expensive. Um, you know, I didn't mention that earlier, by the way. The anoint is ironwood. Uh, let's go ahead and come back here and show you guys that. Tree. Ironwood is down here. So a clear, an amber, and a teal gives you ironwood. 30% totem life. 20 all element resistances, physical damage reduction, and 100 armor per summon totem. Uh, so it's 600 armor. Uh, crazy, crazy note. This is massive damage. 6% more damage for that. Pretty big. All right, cool. So we're coming back here. Uh, so now the way to use this is very, very simple. So you can literally just click these link guys, and it takes you right to the trade website and the exact item that you should get for that slot. So I've made it as easy as possible uh, to make you guys this experience as smooth and nice as possible let's click a rare here and i do have some some notes in here over time i'll probably include more notes uh, but this has everything you need guys uh, and this is a live version of this google doc as well so if i ever make changes especially to like the path of building or if i change maybe an item or two out this will be up to date so definitely come over here and check it out like this pob is absolutely correct um and I think I've already mentioned pretty much all the things that you can do in the end game. Yeah, see like all these red ones, uh, Coward's Legacy, Variety's Veil, vale, um, you know, the shield here. Um, I think that's in series reflection. It's series reflection. Um, what else? You know, the gloves, the cheap gloves, the Culling Strike gloves. It, it's literally got everything you need. The Torchak boots. Uh, if you want to do different boots, like if you want cannot be frozen on your boots, you can do that, uh, which is sad, by the way. It's not even cannot be frozen anymore. It's 80% chance to <laughs> avoid being frozen, which is poo-poo. Uh, anyways, rings, Kikazawa rings. Um, this is the rare ring. I'm sorry, the magic ring that you use in combo with Verity's Veil. Let's just click that. I'll show you guys that. 
see it's it's exactly what you want and you can craft these by the way very easily just craft them yourself if it's too expensive it looks pretty expensive over here for no reason they're usually way cheaper than that um but you would literally just look for like you know get a, a resist and then you would look for high life resist uh super easy and then if you really wanted you could do like these rings which is what i have which is the like i said the oh that's incorrect let's actually fix that live on stream uh, so not to spare and hit, we want Assassin's Mark. Assassin's Mark is actually uh, more damage. So let's do that real quick. Um, let's do 12. Mm, let's not do 12. And there's still only two available. Uh, so let's go ahead and edit that. But yeah, so 12 Assassin's Mark on hit. Very, very good. Let's fix that. Uh, you can get despair on hit if you want, I guess. Um, but Assassin's Mark is more damage. So just keep that in mind um the ring two curse reduction here let's show you these rings because these are actually pretty cool rings uh and i don't think a lot of people are using them so uh reduce effect of curse and this is important to show you guys because uh, there's two things that are very very important with this uh, if you get at least uh, and I've, I've put here that it has to be a tier one roll by the way uh, but you need at least 34 percent reduced curse effect on you uh, so you can get a 34 or a 35 and that's totally fine so that might save you guys some divines and then once you do that you want to use uh let's do that there you go you want to use caster modifier catalysts okay uh i forget what they call are they called imbued catalyst i'm not 100 sure but the, the caster modifier catalysts and that'll bring you up to 40 percent reduced curse effect on you i think you actually only need 18 percent as well but that's how you get these rings up to 40%. Perfect. Anything else over here that we should talk about? Um, jewels, just a whole bunch of jewels uh, in here. Those, the big boy jewels with all the totem life. Very, very, very good. If you need a jewel, like if you're using a Stygian Vise with some extra um, Dex or Int, you would come here. Uh, but yeah, so that is this document. Um, kill all the bandits. Uh, bad map mods probably the only bad map mod is no region literally everything else is fine you know no re uh, reflect is fine we don't do elemental damage we don't do physical damage we do chaos damage so that's totally fine uh, so super super solid overall uh, i have had a great time with this build uh, tons of damage in a era where damage has been nerfed for so many builds uh, it's refreshing to play a build that is probably like on par with last league's you know power spike that all the builds had you feel pretty similar to what you felt last league with this build uh, and that's probably what uh what saved the league for me you know, it just felt bad having to you know test you know the new skill comes out like the absolution I've, I've probably complained about this but it was just, it just made me so sad at being so poop um and then with all the other skills getting so much nerfs the mana stuff the flash changes i was not digging the league uh, but i played this build and it's been a great time so far i've been able to tackle all the content with it and i've had a good time doing it uh, there's a reason so many people are playing pob are playing are playing um this build let's actually look and see how many people are playing let's do four bidden right seven percent of the entire population is playing um forbidden right that's actually quite a lot that means a ton of people are playing forbidden right totems um you know what i'm gonna actually link this in the description for you guys too so you can actually come to this website and you can check out these people's builds so if you guys ever want you know any extra uh ideas you can come to you know this site and you can check all these people's gear and just kind of see what they're doing too so pretty pretty cool so I'll, I'll include this as well so like you can see this guy was using the coward's legacy brady's veil option um so pretty cool I'll include that as well in the description. Yep, I had a great time playing this. Uh, if you guys do choose this, super uh, easy to level as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the leveling process. Uh, it's super smooth in the maps. You know, invest, you know, a little bit more currency. It's a super good boss farmer. Uh, so all around great build. I've been having a good time with it. And if you guys choose it, I hope you guys do too. I will catch you guys in the next one.